welcome to Season 2, Episode 21 of One Man's Opinion. Today I am reviewing Goodspeed Musical's production of 42nd Street with music by Harry Warren, lyrics by Al Dubin, and book by Michael Stewart and Mark Bramble, directed and choreographed by Randy Skinner. Based on a novel by Bradford Ropes and 1933 film of the same name, 42nd Street is the story of Peggy Sawyer, played by Karina K. Lauchier. My apologies if I pronounced your last name incorrectly. A fresh-off-the-bus aspiring actress from Allentown, Pennsylvania. Though green in the mechanics and social politics of the theater community, she is a supremely talented singer and dancer looking to get an audition for Pretty Lady, the newest musical production by Julian Marsh, played by Max von Essen. Fate is on her side, as though she is late for the audition, she impresses Billy Lawler, the lead actor in Pretty Lady, played by Blake Stadnick, and the chorus girl she runs into on the street. The person she doesn't impress, or at least raises the green eye of envy, is Dorothy Brock, played by Kate Baldwin, the lead actress in a musical whose star has faded due to her arrogant personality. Julian has hired Dorothy because her lover, Abner Dillon, played by David Jennings, is funding the production. Tensions rise and the drama escalates as Dorothy's attempts to hide her secret trysts with former co-star Pat Denning, played by Patrick Oliver Jones, are discovered, and Peggy's talents become more and more pronounced. 42nd Street is pure musical gold, a tender homage to the tireless efforts of the Depression-era hoofer slaving away on stage 12 hours a day for $30 a week with classic songs like Go Into Your Dance, I Only Have Eyes For You, We're In The Money, and Lullaby of Broadway. Much of the praise goes to Randy Skinner. If you don't know who Mr. Skinner is, he was the dance assistant to the original Broadway production in 1980 and choreographed the 2001 revival, as well as the 2017 West End revival. His familiarity with the show has proven invaluable, as every beat of the show is beautifully nuanced, from the perfectly performed opening tap number to the sultry, seductive finale of the title song, 42nd Street. I mean, seriously, it's not hyperbole when I say the ensemble tapped this opening number in such perfect unison the night I was there, they truly sounded as one. By the end of the opening dance number, an audition scene with the ensemble tapping their hearts out, I was already beaming and knew that this was already on the path to being one of the most enjoyable musical productions I've ever seen. What's great about 42nd Street isn't just the dancing, which is near perfect through most of the show, though a touch of fatigue does start to show itself near the end. But it's also the nuanced detail in the acting, the little glance by Peggy toward Billy during a rehearsal, indicating her longing for him that most people will miss with so much going on on stage. And the grand speeches of Julian Marsh that Max von Essen owns with equal parts piety and devotion to his oft-beleaguered cast. The occasional but never too often grandiose posturing of Dorothy as she does her best to recapture her lost dignity and respect. The design team all around do an awesome job. Michael Carnahan's scenic design, Kara Harmon's costume design, Corey Paddock's lighting design, Jay Hilton's sound design, Sean Dewan's projection design, and Jay Jared Janice's hair wig and makeup design are all nearly flawless. All their work flows together in an amalgamation of color, texture, and form. 
Doohan's projections never overtake the rest of Carnahan's art deco design or distract from the performers. The lighting pops and creates its own depth, especially coupled with the projections during the number 42nd Street. And so often when there is a big brassy score like this, the sound balance can be sloppy, but Hilton keeps everything in order with nothing overpowering the rest. If I had any nitpicks, it would have been a couple beats at the beginning of Lullaby of Broadway. There are some big brassy cues that happen that suggest that there should be a visual bump to go with it, and Peggy and Julian, who are the two people on stage at that time, don't give much in those moments. It's a slight critique, but barely worth mentioning. The cast is phenomenal. I love that there are scared dancers during the audition at the top of the show. I love Karina K. Luchier's innocence mixed with anxiety and fear as Peggy. I love Baldwin's torch singer's sultriness. They're all fantastic. 42nd Street is a love letter to a long-lost period of musical theater history. Yes, there are a number of politically incorrect moments and jokes that would have been historically correct, but also may be offensive to some. But Goodspeed's 42nd Street is about as good as musical theater gets. But I'm only one man's opinion, so be sure to leave yours in the comments below. If you're interested in seeing 42nd Street, I'll leave a link in the description where you can get tickets. Support my channel by liking, sharing, and subscribing, and click the notification bell to be alerted to future reviews. I've got a busy weekend coming up with four Broadway shows I'm seeing. I don't know when the reviews will start coming out, but I'm hoping to have my first, The Revival of Death of a Salesman, out by Monday. Uh, thank you so very much for watching, and I will see you at the theater.